Okie dokie, this is Toy Tactics. I've seen this spammed a fair bit on the real-time strategy subreddit that I like to look at to see what kind of strategy games are coming out in the future. So, you know what? I was like, I'll buy it. I'll see how it is. It really reminds me of Tabs, the total accurate battle simulator. I hope I said that correctly. But we'll go over the interface here real quick. Then we'll jump into three missions and I'll show you how it's done. So first things first, you have your army screen. This will show you what your units are strong against and weak against, and you can kind of just click on them and it's kind of a you know nice little thing. And then if you want to, you can change your color as well. Next, we have your abilities UI. And over here, you have all your spells that you buy with this currency shown right here. And it's as simple as clicking on it and clicking acquire. And then you can go over here and say we don't want this we can unequip it and then we can throw in uh little piggies and we'll use these in the next match just so you can see what they do but there is a little picture that shows what they do as well and then on this screen you have what makes your units different than one another because there is like in the second campaign for example which i've done the first campaign uh, there is some overlap between the two uh, characters. You have like this knight, for example, and you have your basic militia infantry, you have your ranged infantry. These are roughly the same across the two I've played so far. I want to say there's more campaigns, but I'm not quite sure yet. But what makes them separate from each other is this relic screen. So depending on what you have on this relic screen here, it'll change what the unit does for example this sort of peleus i don't speak roman will make it weaker to archers if you hit them with it or you can try to get them set on fire or you can make them stronger against arrows we'll just leave on sort of peleus right now and same thing with your archers you can have them do more damage that is further further you are the more damage it does this one has a small chance to deal fire and this one gives more knockback but that's just a little example of what we have there. So let's go ahead and jump into a mission here. And you have three rewards. One is for beating the mission. The other two are for completing the sub objectives. And then there's a chest. The chest basically gives you those relics. There's two kinds of chests, one that any unit can open and one that can only be opened by your commander unit or your king or whatever you want to call them, leader. So let's say you got into this mission and uh oh you forgot to put a spell you wanted on you can simply click here and do it right now so that's kind of the nice thing like like let's say we didn't want this uh oh we wanted uh these arrows instead we can just go equip those arrows and call it a day so you're good right there so to move your characters you just left click and then right click if you want to do everything or you just simply left click on what you want and you can drag it around as well and your people will move accordingly. If you ever want to go faster, you can click these buttons up here. I don't know if they're bindable. Let me check that real fast, actually. Uh, yes, you can actually change it with uh, chips and control, but it's not working for me. I don't know why. But I'm not going to worry about it. So your spells are located here on the right hand side of the screen. They are increased every time you get a kill. So every time you get a kill, it increases this bar here. When this bar fills up, you can use the spell. However, if it has two rows or two columns, you have to wait till both fill. If it just has one column, you can fill it uh, and use it right away, pretty much. So sometimes there's objectives on the map, rebuild a tower and slay. And these are the sub objectives that get you those other two symbols over here, which I don't have. So here's where the unique mechanic in this game comes into play. I have not seen this in other games. So if we click space to slow down time real fast, and then we click on the symbol here, we get a paintbrush. So now we can decide what we want to do. We can draw a little line right here. And then we can paint on top of this tower. Just like that. And then once you right click and you let it go, Your units will move accordingly 
and they will start trying to fill in that line the best they can. Now, your guys do sound like Jawas, so just a heads up. And then we'll put our big guy down here. These things right here, which I, I can't make a drag selection box, which I, just, I always want a drag select box. I don't know why. Don't, don't ask me. Uh, this box right here. This box. <laughs> this piece of terrain right here, you can go down, but you can't go back up. It. So you're just kind of stuck there. But you have to go all the way around. And you can kind of go around and look at the terrain. You can zoom really far out if you want to, or you can get right into combat. There also is an auto camera, but I'm not a fan of the auto camera, so I leave it off. There we go. And then here's one of the chests that's coming in. Usually they're not carried by enemies. They typically come... I'll show this as a spell off real quick. So we're going to hit space. You can go into slow-mo mode and you draw where you want your spell to go. Set some of them on fire. Kind of poorly aimed, I kind of missed a lot of them. But all you have to do is you take your guy, you move it over, and you go pick up the chest. I've already picked up this chest, but it still lets you pick up all the chests again for some reason. There we go. And it says what you unlocked. Unfortunately, it does not tell you what it does in combat. It's just more of a, hey, you unlock this thing kind of, you know, thing. And while waiting for this to spawn here, you can speed up the game. And you can also click on these things. I don't know the purpose of clicking on these, but you, you, get, you get a poke them and they move. Now these are big guys, so they're strong against like ma your militia. I'm gonna call these militia. So they're really strong against these militia types. But our leader is very good against them as well because they're kind of tanky. And we do have these archers up here, which will shoot these guys repeatedly. And then we'll unlock this petty old spear. I don't know how they said. Don't, don't ask me how it said. I don't. I can't pronounce things. All right. And then we can draw. We got some piggies. So we'll put a line right here, just like that. And we'll drop some piggies into the field. Now they'll come attack these piggies. Wasn't that fun? We can use another rain of fire. And then we'll show this spear on the next one. We'll save it a little bit. So I kind of wanted just to use this map as a way to show how the game was played. Because it's kind of really easy. And there's not a lot I have to do in terms of control. And we'll use this spear right here. You place it on the ground, it comes down, and it slaps people just like that. And then we'll show this big tornado, which is kind of one of the more quote unquote end game kind of things. You can just rush this right away if you want to. It's like one, two, two, three, or something like that. So you can get it pretty early on. And arrows do have knockback, so that relic, which does the knockback, can be very effective against big targets like this. All right, we have this ready. We'll use it on this next group after this one spawns. I think it's just like a really big group, yeah. Yep. All right, so we'll take this spell and we'll just plant it right here. And you know what? Just because we don't like them, we can drop arrows on top of them, too. See, they kind of have a bad day. And the nice thing is, while the whirlwind is on the field, it does level up as well. And we can even put some more piggies. Now, that fire tornado basically made them catch on a fire while dealing damage to them the whole time. So even if they didn't uh, get shot by anybody, they would have died eventually on their own. Okay, so I thought that'd be a nice, really introductory mission. It's very nice and simple, and then it gives you like a little... I don't know if this is specific to the mission you're on, or if it's just like a time thing based on how many enemies you killed versus how many you lost, kind of like the old Command & Conquer games where they give you like a score screen, however weirdly they calculated that. I don't know how that works. All right, we'll do this one next. It's a bit further on in the campaign. It's like one of the later ones for the first campaign. 
but there's always more you can do as well. Because like I said, there is a second campaign, which you unlock, I think, after clearing this one or the next one. And you can skip this little cutscene, but I'll I'll let it play just so you can kind of see the map in this kind of neat, neat little thing. I like how it does this. On this one, you start off with a pretty good chunk of units. Sometimes you start off with nothing at all. Uh, we'll just go ahead and take a look at our cards here. We'll get rid of this arrow and we'll grab some of these reinforcements instead. I like these guys. We'll equip these instead. There we go. We'll, we'll leave the piggies. There we go. So to get through objects like this, all you do is just click on some units and try to path across it. And then they will come in and they will try to slam their way through. There you go. So it's kind of simple, easy peasy, just like that. So in this one, you have to conquer the Circus Maximus, which is this area over here. And it wants you to rebuild and defend two structures. So it wants you to take this and this, and then it wants you to not lose any units. Or archers, I should say, not units. And the treasure chest on this map is all the way back here. There's a little surprise with it. So we will deal with these guys first, and then we'll worry about these people up here. Or maybe we deal with these people up here, and then worry about these guys over here. Let's do it that way. So, let's try to rearrange these guys a little bit. We'll take our archers, and we'll spread them out in a nice line. Like that. There we go, and then we'll get our hero off the thing. He's, he's trying so hard to get there, man. And then for these guys, we can split them into two groups if we want to. We can have a nice little like half circle like this, and then a nice little half circle like this. And then they're nice little groups. And if we want to, now we organize them. Something like this. And these people come and they put them in the back, and we can put our leader in the middle. And then we take them and go up here and attack just like this. There we go, all nice and dead. And we'll have our leader come capture this over here while they're doing that. There we go, that was easy peasy. So now we take all these people and we get them ready for the next fight. now we've captured this we're gonna bring this guy back down here and since this is trying to attack these guys they're gonna come into combat with us we'll bring these guys forward and these guys can come up out now this can come over here and we can put these guys on top of their archers just like that Did I always have 12 of these or did I lose archers? Did I have 14? I think I lost some archers. Somehow. I'm not gonna worry about it. Alright, and then we can decide to use these spells. Let's watch this spell play out over here. Got pretty good suction power on it. Look at that. We can throw some people in the middle of it, and it'll draw these people inwards towards it. See so yeah, they're all wanting to go fight those people. Now they're getting sucked out of the whirlwind. And then we can drop a spear right on top of them. And then we can drop piggies on top of them. Strategy? We don't need that. We just drop spells. There we go. And now they're rushing towards us, so we can deal with them. And we'll put our archers a little bit right here. There we go. And now we just wait for them to come into us. I probably could have phrased that better. We'll summon some people right on top of this guy. Maybe drop a spear on top of him. Let me drop, drop some piggies on top of them.
There we go. And we'll suck this guy into this little tornado here, and then we'll let our people rain some arrows on him, which are unfortunately hitting this structure right here. What if I can smack this structure? Can I beat the structure? I can't. Oh well, let's just take our dudes and go into them then. Alright, let's put these people over here so they can start whacking on them. There we go. He's all nice and dead. Now there is a little surprise. All the way over here. So we'll, we'll let these people capture this real quick. And they really hate this wall. All right, so we'll take these people over here. And then we'll put them all the way over here to capture this chest. So I can show you what happens sometimes when you try to capture chests. And we'll show what the three times speed looks like. It automatically does this with the music, by the way. Which I'm not a fan of. And our guy did some slapping. There you go, and that's how you grab that shit. And we'll speed it up. And there you go. I did only have 12 archers. I thought I had 14. And the game does have boss battles in them as well. So we will take a look at the very first boss battle against Heracles. Or Hercules. I don't know how his name is said. I've only ever seen it written down. Hercules? Did I get it? Hercules. Okay, it's not Heracles, it's Hercules. I couldn't remember which one it was. Heracles is someone else, like with Damocles and all that. I don't know things, man. Now, I believe this guy doesn't do anything until you start to fight him. So we should be able to set up, basically. And we have both of our leaders here. All right, so let's go ahead and get set up. We'll take our archers. And we'll set some archers along this path right here. And we'll set some along this path right here. Then we'll take our warriors and then we'll go in threes. So we'll go here, here, here. And that should be plenty. And then we'll take our heroes. Uh, you are caster hero. I don't remember what auras I have on them. I should have checked before the battle. And then we'll put our king over here. And we'll let the people rock out. He does a big slam move, which hits all the people around him. And that's these people back here. So we'll take these people away and we'll put these people into combat. I forgot to change these out. So we'll have our guy over here. We'll heal these people. And then these people up here, some of them can take the high ground. While the others can shoot from over here. And the enemy does get spells as well, so we can try to move our people out of the spells. And we'll keep healing. I'm saying I want to do all of them. Now we'll take these people out, we'll put these people in. And we'll take this guy and we'll put them over here to heal these ones. Move these closer since he's moving. Put them behind here. I'll move these guys into combat range. Maybe we've been breaking down into smaller groups as well. 
This guy can go out here to help out. These can go over here. You can go help out over here. And they'll break it in even smaller groups. Move these guys forward a tiny bit. Move these guys backward a tiny bit. I'm gonna heal these people. Um, put these archers away if we can. They're helping out. These guys are helping out. These guys come over to help out. We'll drop a spell on him. The archers can come back over. We can get some piggies over here and then we can move our hero away. These guys are still fighting. We'll move these guys into combat now. These guys can move back in. We'll take some of our archers. And we'll put them up here and then we'll put the rest back here. Okay, and our hero guy's taking care of him. These guys it blew a slam. I moved it back way too slow. I didn't notice too late. And we'll put this guy next to him instead. And we'll drop a spear on him. And we'll put a whirlwind on him. And we'll drop some piggies on him. Have some piggies. He threw the piggies into my people. Run. Okay, we got to put this guy closer to him now. Our king's getting a little hurt. I don't know why these people aren't shooting this guy. All right, the beast is almost slain. Send these people in to deal with him. Ooh, he almost died. He's almost dead. Get him. There we go. We are winners. Nobody died. I mean, a lot of people died, but my main guys didn't die. Overall, not bad. Yeah, those are spells you probably shouldn't have equipped for that fight because like you can't really use this one he knocks these into your own guys oopsie doodle so having like a catapult probably would have been decent or an offensive camp to make your guys shoot a lot faster would have been good or even this one which just spawns guys into battle to keep them in the middle and uh or uh, even a healing tent as well or putting my own towers up because you can build temporary towers as well these are temporary these are not permanent towers so there's a whole bunch of different stuff you can do for that. Like, we can unlock this now if we want to. And there's only, like, two more things I need to get. Um, these two laurels, or this laurel, this laurel, and then you can unlock everything. I don't know if there's anything else to do with your points after you unlock everything, because I haven't done that yet, so I couldn't tell you. But there is, like I said, there is a second campaign you can go to if you want to. And I've only started the first few bits of it, and it kind of takes you through some slight differences uh with this faction your people here your queen and your king um get special abilities as you put them near your units but you have to like hover them near your units and then they'll give them a special ability like one of them your king i think uh helps reflect arrows or something like that and then there's their own different set of spells as well so overall, I do like how it tries to separate the factions out while the general units are the same. Because, like I said, you do get your militia, you do get your arrow guys, you get your knights, you get your heavy unit. They're slightly different. And then you get your two kind of leader units. That, I think, remains the same across most of the factions you play to give it kind of a general idea of and it's easy to pick up another faction of that sameness and then what does separate them out is the spell screen which does have a bit of sameness on it like this one for example uh, pushes people in a direction while the other one drops fire on the ground but there is still an exploding tree you have people that can turn stuff into cows and you have uh, traps and things and then you have like crossbows so there is some slight differences but 
they're, the spells generally have the same vein. And then what helps them separate out further is our last person you saw, we had one that made them vulnerable to arrows. We had one that made them set them on fire. And then we had one that made them resistant to arrows. On these people, you get a mace that has a chance to stun. Uh, you have a chance to apply ice damage to the enemy every time an infantry blocks damage. And then infantry gains immunity to blizzards. Blizzards are actually a thing in this map because blizzards happen and they will try to push your, your units off the ledge. Uh, let me see if I can't show that off real quick. Okay, so here is a map where a blizzard happens and you can see it in real time. We just need to get close to our king here and he'll activate. Uh, because this map is a little bit different than the others. I'm not going to play through this one. I just wanted to show the mechanic off. If you press this switch, this bridge will come down. You have to do it with your low ground units. And then your king up here can cross the bridge to capture these crossbowmen. And then he can also break down this tower, yada yada. But we'll show off this mechanic real fast. So as your unit comes across and he gets into the blizzard right here. If we stop moving him, he should try to get slowly pushed. We'll have him just come here. And as you can see, he's just getting slowly pushed back as he tries to run to this over here. So we'll have him go next to the ledge and you can watch him get pushed off. There we go. And now he's down and he can't get back up because you can't cross this, which uh, and the whole point of this section right here is to one, get these crossbowmen up here and two, it's the treasure chest. This treasure chest can only be opened by your hero unit. They cannot be opened by your regular units. However, your regular units can pick it up and take it to your hero unit. And this last bridge is stopped by this guy right here. And the way to get him off this perch is you get this spell, Frosty Gale, which can knock him off the ledge. So I just wanted to show that off right there. There is two more game modes. Uh, there is, I'll just show off both of them real quick. You go to play, you go to extra, and I don't know what Mercenaries is because I don't have it unlocked, so there's probably a, a fourth game mode that I don't know about. I just don't have this unlocked because I don't know what it is. All right, we clicked on challenges, and then it starts you off pretty simply, and you have multiple levels of this, which change how the unit interactions work. We'll just show off uh, level two right away, and you can see what it's like. So you have this setup right here. However, if you go into this setup right now, if we just move these people into combat currently as is, you'll see what happens here. And unfortunately you can't speed it up. I don't know why. As we see, these people started fighting before our other group got into combat at a, even remotely close at all. So by the time our other guys get there, our first unit is pretty much almost dead. We'll just let this finish up here. So, a pretty crushing loss. Yep. So we'll click retry. And this time we'll do it slightly different. We'll take our people and we'll put them on the outside over here. Because they had a certain aggro range. And that's how you kind of get through these. You learn the aggro range of certain units. And you can get pretty close to them before they aggro even. Yeah, you can get real close. So we'll do something like this now. And keep sliding them closer and closer. And now that they're getting to combat with us, we'll do something like this. And then we'll cl collapse on them just like that. There we go. It's a little bit better this time around. And once again, they're all, you see, they're all on the outside right here. There's basically none on the inside. But what you can do during combat is you can pause time, click your people, and then draw kind of this circle around them just like that. And then your guys will reorganize themselves along this line the best they can during combat to encircle the enemy.
There we go. And for some reason, I don't know why it doesn't show your best time. We obviously just beat this, but there's no time here. There are a few bugs in the game still. I don't know if the game's alpha. Uh, let me check that real fast. Okay, I did just check and it is still early access, so some things aren't quite implemented yet. All right, we'll go to extra again, and this time we'll show off the sandbox mode. And we'll go to uh, the booty pit. Okay, so we're at the booty pit. Now, unfortunately, like this area back here where you think you should be able to draw stuff. Because, like, I want to, you know, a cool combat to draw stuff back here. Oh, you can't draw stuff back here now. Hey, they updated it. Okay, you used to not be able to do this. Maybe it was with the enemies. Let's try with enemies. Okay, with enemy units, you can't do it. Uh, so the point of this one, it wants you to attack this fort. Uh, I would like it so the AI rushes into you. Like, I would like it to be able to have that smartness to it in the sandbox mode where you can have the AI push into you to attack. So that is something I would like to see added, but we'll save that for my thoughts section. And uh, we'll just set it up real quick. And um, we'll do it in a snap for you so you don't have to wait around. So one, two, three, and poof. All right, there we go. We have a little enemy encampment set up up here. They got their little dude all protected. We got some archers along the side. We have some uh, little crossbow things and a few guys, and we have like way more troops. So hopefully this is enough troops to bypass all this stuff, we'll see. And we just click fight and they go to town. So we have these people come up here and they are coming to fight me and we'll have them just come up here and have these guys come up here. So these arrow things are very strong. They're kicking this guy's butt. We won't worry about this one yet, but we will worry about this guy right over here. Oh, this thing is, these things smack, dude. <laughs> There's probably spells I could add as well. Oh, I just didn't pay attention to it. <laughs> uh, we can try to have these guys go up here now and these archers. This can go up here, and these like archers come right here. We can try that out. And yeah, these guys are doing a lot better. Uh, what happened to these guys back here? Oh, they're all right here. Okay. Move these guys up, and this side died over here. And they got these crossbow guys. So let's try to kill these things up here. The yeah, outside failed. These things are strong. I mean, these are really tiny things that they're firing at. Then we got these. They can try to come up here as well. They can come up here. We try to send them over here, and then let's go up here as well. Okay, this one died. We can take these archers now and try to put them up there. I don't know why these are highlighted blue. It's kind of confusing me because I'm blue. This guy can come up. Uh. Okay, these guys can try to come up here and kill this thing now. Then these guys can come up. Why can't I click this guy? What is he? Is this him? This is him, okay. <laughs> okay, these were a bit too strong. And my control is not the best. I've only played this game for like two hours. But yeah, these are uh, really strong. Look out. Anyways, we, we died pretty bad. <laughs> All right, I might, I might have over... I might have underestimated the strength of those things a little bit. All right, so overall, what do I think of the game? Uh, it is early access, of course, so it does seem like it's a bit thin so far compared to games that have been out for a while, like Total Totally Accurate Battle uh, Simulator. But that shouldn't be an indicator of what will happen to this game in the future. So far, they seem to have a pretty solid base. Uh, if every campaign you play, and I don't know how many there are, I'm assuming there's one for each faction, and it seemed like there was four factions, and then the fifth one was like pirates or something. I don't think the pirates are an actual faction, though. I think they're just like uh, a, an enemy typing on some maps I haven't got to yet. 
but if there is four campaigns that means there's roughly i want to say what 52 missions or something like that is that is that the math i'm going for here 50 13 times four yeah 52 i can do math i'm smart but you can go ahead and have 13 per mission so that's a pretty decent amount of campaign missions 52 overall so there is content to be had and then of course i do like the relic screen here although it does seem like certain relics are just flat out stronger than other relics but as far as things i don't like about the game what i don't like so far is some of the units seem to have a, a bit too much ragdoll to them which can really uh, upset some of your formations that you make like let's say you're surrounding one of these bigger guys here with like archers or something and some of your footmen get a bit too close they can like slap your footmen straight into your archers and then knock them back which could send them off a off a cliff or something which is unfortunate but uh maybe tone down some of the knockback slightly especially from your own units when your king walks through your footmen he can just knock them into the stratosphere like i have noticed that where i moved my king through a formation and he just completely punched his way through and they went flying off the map I'm like that is not at all what i intended to do so maybe for self unit self unit collision maybe turn that down slightly for the ragdolling effect or maybe that is part of what they want you to do is to maneuver around your own units but i do think that feels bad from a player perspective but it is, it is supposed to be like a kind of a goofy game where you have like little toys that are bouncing around and you know you're, they're knocking into each other because they don't have good motor control. So I, I can understand their design decision there. I just don't agree with the design decision. I think it's a bit annoying as a player to not have a tiny bit more control in that regards. Uh, but the paintbrush thing, like using your paintbrush is something I really haven't seen in a game before. I don't know if I've seen a game that has that in there. Oh god, did they have that in uh, the Total War series where you could set up formations in like really funky ways? I can't quite remember like, but I do think like Total War had something similar to it where you could uh, not like draw unit formations, but I think they had a whole bunch of preset ones. But I do like the fact that you can split units repeatedly like this. It does make it pretty nice to be able to do something like that so i do appreciate how this works i do think it's just a very cool design especially in a game where this is kind of uh i wouldn't i kind of want to call it an auto battler but there is hands-on approaches with the spells and the painting and the paint brushing so it's not like exactly an auto battler but it does the units do have kind of a mind of their own with a lot less direct control you kind of tell them to go to a place and fight and they do their own thing so i don't know what you would call that so it's, it's not exactly an auto battler but that's the closest i can think of in terms of how to categorize it it's basically just tabs though i don't think i have too much else to say i like how the spells work some of the spells uh it would be nice if the picture they use wasn't zoomed all the way down for the little picture of it like this one right here this is zoomed very far down so you don't know exactly like how big that is or how small that is based on this i would like it the ability to pull back this camera or something because this is just a, it's a little misleading on certain things like the Byzantine fire or Byzantine. uh you use the ability and it covers only a, an area of like here to here it's not very big at all but the image would lead you to believe it's like some really huge massive thing because it's really really zoomed in so that was one thing i did find a bit confusing and i i hope they would cl clarify that a little bit once you use the ability you'll realize how it's how it's works but until then clarity is king clarity is king uh oh one other thing i don't like about the game is when you click the speed up button it speeds up the music and then pitches it upwards a little bit. I would like it that the music is decoupled from the speed up portion of the game. So just decouple it from the game time. Uh, I don't mind like unit cues and sounds going off really, really rapidly, but the music is something you should really leave alone because sped up music usually sounds terrible unless you're in a night court. If you're in a night court, uh, sure, great, whatever. Uh, it's not, not, not my cup of tea. 
And then other things I do like are how you can go on ridges with crossbowmen and they can fire down and the guys can't, you know, fight back up at you. And you do you do seem to have a bit of an advantage when you're on high ground because you can like fire your arrows up higher and they can hit the ground. Whereas these guys have a struggle shooting upwards at you and they might hit the cliff face or they might hit like a structure or something. So that is pretty nice. Yeah. All in all, I kind of like the direction of this game's going and there's not too much I dislike about it so far. So we'll see how it unravels in the future and it could shape it to be a pretty good sandboxy style game where you can just kind of jump in and mess around with some units or maybe they'll flesh out and do some more campaign stuff and I still don't know what mercenaries mode is so maybe that's something I just haven't got to yet. I've played the game for around like uh, four hours just kind of messing around with the sandbox mode and the challenges so I I haven't been really, you know, pounding that campaign. I just kind of like messing around with stuff that little weeble wobbles that punch each other. So yeah. So let me know what you guys thought about it in the comment section below. Did you like what you see? If you like something about the game, let me know what you liked. And if you didn't like something about what you see, let me know down below what you didn't like about the game. Because I think it's in a pretty good state so far. And I do hope they keep on improving it because I do like this little paintbrush mechanic they have here where you can draw your combat lines and go into combat and uh, rearrange stuff and you can pause and slow down. It's just, it's just a nice thing I haven't really seen before. Scrap!